So um, we also have to talk about how people get picked to work in the bureaucracy. How do you kind of apply? What's the process? We're not going to go like super in depth, but just talking about in general how they pick people. And so um, you guys know what the word like spoiled means. And we kind of talked about this in class, I think, um, the spoil system. And then um, you can kind of relate that to the idea of nepotism. Nepotism is like when you get hired, you get a promotion, you get recognition, but you have some sort of relation with the person who is putting you in that position or the boss or the company. And so that is generally like super frowned upon. Um, and so it's a spoil system. Like I said, it's just political patronage and personal loyalty. So it's like you pick somebody because you're either friends with them, they can give you something specific, or um, you're related to them, something like that. You're not earning that position. It's a spoil system because it's a spoiled system. Uh, that person is kind of like spoiled and they just like get the position based on um, nothing nothing related to their abilities, talents, anything like that. And so now, based on 1883, the Pendleton Act, we have the merit system. Whereas if you are earning something by merit, it's because you're experienced, you're qualified, um, they have civil service um, exams, things like that. That's why it's really, really hard to fire somebody that's part of the bureaucracy. That's part of one of the critiques on it is that um, not only is it big and some people see it as inefficient, um, it's also very hard to fire somebody because of um, the system they have to go to get hired. And so this is all kind of overseen by the OPM or the personal management office. And we know we can go back to the executive offices and that's what that's part of. And so now switching not to just how they hire, but what does the bureaucracy do? So the bureaucracy basically just enforces government policies, anything to help, because we know kind of the tagline of the executive branch is they enforce the law. Well, the president can't do that all on their own. Um, as much as we'd like to think that they're um, or maybe you don't think they're qualified and they know what they're doing and they um, are put in that position because they have all these qualities, they have to have help. That's why um, the bureaucracy, this fourth branch, is so important and so prevalent and it's um, something that would change our lives forever if we didn't have it. And so the bureaucracy basically makes rules, enforces regulations, issues fines. You can kind of think of them not as like federal police officers necessarily. That's not a super great way to think of it, but think of it kind of the same function. They're not going to go and arrest you or anything, but they're going to enforce regulations. They're going to make sure people are following like OSHA guidelines. So for those of you in like the healthcare class, you've learned about OSHA and those are occupational safety hazard regulations, things like that, that every company has to abide by. So they give you a way to, um, handle any hazardous uh, material or clean up certain ways or if you work in like construction or you want to go to the lineman school anything like that they're going to have a set of guidelines and safety things where you have to follow those and if companies are not following those they're putting their employees in risk and they can get fined or even get they can just get in a lot of trouble um, and so they can also be called to testify in congressional hearings. And so they can be part of an investigation. They were definitely part of this last impeachment investigation. I'm not, don't have time to get into all that, but maybe after all this craziness. Um, and I know I went over this last video, but I want to do it again, just because I think this is a really good kind of flow for us to understand this. Um, so we know, like if we kind of put it in these little boxes, we know Congress starts with the law starts as an idea, they get it, they write it, they pass it, gets to the president, let's say he signs it, awesome. Now he's got to hand it off to somebody to understand how to actually implement it because the president can't just say something. He doesn't have the power and authority. He's just one person. And so then he gives it to a cabinet who might give it to an independent agency who might have... Um, somebody go forth and train everybody on what the regulations and the issues are. And so the bureaucracy, they get to come up with those like nitty gritty kind of rules. Like if we went with the OSHA example, um, it might go with the um, health and human services cabinet and they might give it to OSHA and OSHA is going to make a video and publish a book and they are going to distribute it 
to companies and places of work for everybody to follow. And so um, they really kind of finalize everything and have a lot of say, which is kind of come up this next idea, this discretionary, excuse me, authority. And so this is when um, basically instead of having everything done on the front end in Congress, they allow the bureaucracy to make these further policy decisions. So we have got to always connect this back to policymaking. Um, you guys are probably so sick of hearing that, and I'm sucks, but we got to always think back to how is this going to influence policymaking? How is that tied back to that? Because this is that's this is how the bureaucracy is tied to policymaking. Not only can they um, they can have a relationship and talk with Congress, come up with these ideas, things like that. But once the bills are passed and it's in their hands, they are the people that get to decide, okay, what's the actual rule? Within these guidelines of the bill that's passed into a law, what's the actual fine? How are we going to implement this? How are we going to distribute it? Things that, um, again, when you guys did your, congr your congressional session, um, I was asking you these questions and it was hard to come up with answers. Because you don't know, it's going to be different when you, especially a federal law, everybody has to abide by that. So it's going to be super different um, in the places you go. So kind of an example, I'll quickly run through this, is when, think about like those household labels about hazardous material. The FDA has to kind of define what's hazardous. They have to come up with those labels. They have to figure out how they're going to attach them, where they need to be visible, things like that. Or... Um, again, after 9-11, TSA was created and, to protect those traveling, and now we have, like, the liquid um, enforcements. You can't go right to the gate, the carry-on rules, things like that. And that's all – that one's all very recent, um, and these are always changing, things like that. Um, and so those are a couple examples of how the bureaucracy is actually implementing and carrying out and enforcing these rules created. Um, and then also really quickly on this slide, kind of pointing out, I think the important thing to think about here is that, so the president has the power to appoint, and then Senate has the approval power, we know that, but anybody under those kind of just those civil service positions, the president cannot fire, okay? And that's when it goes back to how difficult it is to fire some of these bureaucrats um kind of their nickname and if you if you look at it trump has gone through a ton of people in his white house staff and his cabinet i mean like there's a huge turnover um but he can't get down to some of these regulatory commissions and things like that if he doesn't agree with them on policy or ideology or party things like that he doesn't have the power to do that and then pretty much everything we have to tie back into checks and balances. So when we're talking about checks on the bureaucracy, again, it's not exactly its own branch, but it almost acts like it is. So we can kind of think of the executive checking or limiting. We got to make sure we remember that checks is actually limiting um, someone else's power. And so he gets to limit their power because he they don't get to just apply for it. He has to pick them. So he is appointing these agency department heads. Um, he's also the one that's proposing change in agency budgets, things like that. And he, at the end of the day, can issue an executive order. And so remember that has the power just as a law. Um, and then checks on, um, the judicial branch can declare their rules unconstitutional and they can limit the bureaucratic, bureaucratic practices and define the rules. So when it comes to the law, it starts with the legislative branch, it gets to the president and the bureaucracy, but we have to know, and I am hope you're kind of gathering this and studying this, that the judicial branch is always going to have the final say. Always. Once they say something, that is what the whole country, that's what everybody has to abide by. Um, as long as it doesn't interfere with states' rights, and there are a couple cases, and we don't have time to get into them right now, unfortunately, but there are cases where um, judicial and state, um, or federal and state rights kind of become judicial branch issues. Um, and so then it comes to congressional oversight. So the legislative branch, they can pass legislation altering the bureaucracy. So these are all the checks that the legislative branch has on the bureaucracy. 
Um, they can add the details. They can not give them the funds because remember the legislative branch, specifically the house has power of the purse. Um, they investigate their activities and hearings. They advise and consent the president of, to appoint certain people. Um, they can create more agencies or they can vote to disband them. And they have the government accountability office and that kind of monitors how efficient or really inefficient the government is in some ways. And so that's going to have a huge, huge, huge pressure on the bureaucracy to perform and make sure that they are being efficient. Because think about how big it is and how many people are a part of that. Of course, it has the tendency to not be perfect all the time and not do exactly what it needs to be doing because it's a lot of people, it's a lot of moving parts, and um, the accountability can kind of get blurry as especially with some of those lower departments or departments that aren't seen as like super prominent or important. And so all of these are checks from the other branches on the bureaucracy specifically. 